And so notice they're more concerned about not impacting rivers than they are about improving human life with low carbon energy. And then with, with fossil fuels, it's of course CO2, but you notice there's no concern with the benefits that are lost uh, due to lack of fossil fuels. And also even with CO2, there's, there's no, uh, there's no precision at all about how significant the negatives are. And there's a total ignoring of any positives of CO2. CO2 is a warming gas. Most of the world is too cold for people. Many more people die of cold than of heat. And then CO2 is also a fertilizing gas that's made the earth far greener. So what you see is there's this constant thread of opposing human impact being the highest goal and not really caring about human life. And what this points to to me is the real goal animating this movement is what I call eliminating human impact on nature, not advancing human flourishing. And I think for the leadership, they're clear, they're more clearly anti-human. They view humans as this like devil species that they want to get rid of, or that that they want to be in charge of getting rid of a lot of them, at least. And then uh and then for um, but more conventionally, I think people have been in various ways deluded into thinking in an anti-human way. So I think people who are kind of pro-human at core, they think of this issue in a way that's anti-human and that notice, notice the culture cares far more about a change in the habitat of polar bears than it does about 3 billion people using almost no electricity. And so I think we've been taught to think of this in an anti-human way. And this is from somebody who's polar bear is my favorite animal, but the fact that we're we're obsessed with them having to move from one piece of ice to another. And that's that's what makes us cry. But we don't care about 3 billion people with virtually no electricity. We've definitely been taught to think about this in an anti-human way.